Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the Solar Edge monitoring portal that show, and I'm going to be showing you the difference between when you are the end user being given uh, access to the system versus when you are the administrator and you set it up and you have the ability to see the additional graphs and charts and stuff. To give you some uh, context here, what's going on is when you hire a solar installer to come and install you know, solar panels on the roof of your home, they will uh, connect your system to their admin portal when they have many sites listed, potentially hundreds or thousands, right, if they've installed the solar on many homes. And they have the ability to run charts and, and reports based on all of their sites in total. But on each of those sites individually, they share a, a login for the homeowners to see just their site. So I'm going to jump in and show you the difference between those. First off, let's look at what it looks like from the regular monitoring portal for the end user, for the customer. Uh, what I'm showing you right here is one of my neighbor's systems and so they they had their system installed by a solar installer and so this is just what the basic interface looks like. So uh, you can see here they have the dashboard icon and the layout icon and those are the only two they have and when I go over to the admin side you'll see that I have uh, much more than that. Uh, then down here they have the basic uh, readouts of their current power production, their energy just today, energy this month, and then their lifetime energy production. And then down here they have power and energy, which they can then see these graphs that break down uh, by the day, week, month, billing cycle, and year. Um, the day you can move your mouse across this um, graph here and you can see that it will show the actual kilowatt uh, production rate at that moment and what time that is. Um, if they jump over here to the week, then it shows you each of the days of, of this week, uh, then the month, and that switches to a bar chart. And then the billing cycle is also a bar chart. And in this case, they haven't set up their billing cycle, so it's asking for that. And then for year, uh, it just shows each of the individual months and the full production for that entire month. Uh, down here on each of these, you have the ability to select the date range that you would like to look at. Uh, with the year, you can just jump to the specific year and it shows you the whole year, of course. If we jump over to the day, you'll see here it now gives us where we need to select the whole day. So we need to select uh, first the, the year, for instance, we can go to 2017 and then we can jump down to say November and then we can pick the day within November and jump to it. So it keeps all of the data for all time, all the way down to every hour uh, of every day or even a smaller increments than that, I think. So um, it, it does not, the data doesn't time out as far as I'm aware. Then down here in the bottom, we have the comparative energy graphs. And so you can see the power production of 2017, 18, 19, and 20 in this case because their system went online in 2017. And then the, the color coding and you can see how uh, the production has varied through the years. And then you can see the same comparative energy chart for uh, the, by quarter and then by year. And then if we come up here to the top, I mean, that's the core of it, the power production information there. If we go over to the layout, uh, in this layout area, we can then see how the panels are laid out. And this depends on the solar installer and how they laid it out in the software, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, in this case, I don't know why they did these like kind of diagonally upside down and, and sideways, but this is not really how they're laid out on their roof. Um, in any case, this is what <laughs> they did. And so we can uh, have it show us a couple of different things here. Uh, with the show tree, we can see the logical layout. Uh, they have two strings and you can see all the different modules that are on each of those strings. And, and that's about that. Um, over here on show playback, um, we can bring up this graph and then we can say play and it will play back the power production over this timeline and you can see the numbers moving right there on those um, uh, on each of the individual panels. So this is kind of cool. This is a partial day. I mean, this is today and it's mid afternoon. So this is not um, a full day production right there. So we can switch this over to weekly and then we can push play again and it'll show how the power production looks on each of these panels as it proceeds through each of the days of the whole week. Um, I'm not really sure how useful this is, to be honest. It's kind of interesting to see. Um, but it, it moves along pretty quickly and I mean, you could pause it and fast forward and rewind it. But like I said, I don't really see that this has a whole lot of, of useful functionality per se. Uh, and then we can hide playback and go over here to weekly and you can see um, that this lists out each of the day 
or you can see the power production of each of the individual panels by the day. So as an example for today, we are in the mid-afternoon. These are their eastward facing panels and that's why they, they are lighter blue. And if you look at the numbers, they've produced um, you know, around a little bit over 400, kilo, uh, 400 watt hours um, so far today. If you look over here, these are the darker panels. These are on the west side of the roof and the sun hasn't been shining on the west side as long as it has been on the east side. So that's why they've produced less and they're down here around 160 watt hours so far today. But by the end of a day, you'll see that the production on both sides are about the same. Uh, if we switch over here to weekly, uh, you'll see that they are shaded about the same. 5.7 and 5.8. Over here it's 5.5, 5.6. Six, so it looks like the west side maybe produces just a little bit more, uh, and then we can switch over here to total, and so you can see since the system went online, uh, what the power production has been for each individual panel. So you know, in in uh, about three years' time, one panel has produced 1.27 megawatt hours. So that's kind of cool to see that. I think to see the, the, how each panel has been performing better or worse than the others. You can see this one right here is only 1.14 megawatt hours and most of these others are a little bit more. So you can see this is a little bit darker and the rest of these all seem to be uh, producing about the same. And with that, that's uh, about there's everything to see. Uh, I guess there's this physical layout and logical layout here. Um, doesn't really do much for me. I mean, it shows the same information as what we were seeing before, but it's now how they're connected by string into the inverter rather than how they're laid out on the roof. I think physical layout is uh, more helpful personally, but this is just, you know, different ways you can slice and dice the information that they give you. And with that, that's about everything that there is to see on the end users monitoring portal on the web interface. All right, so now let's look at what it looks like from my perspective where I own the account. First off, when you first log in, what you see is this site right here, which isn't anything like the other one. And this is uh, one layer above it. Uh, so if I, would, if I were a solar, solar installer and had multiple sites that I had installed, I would be able to see them all listed here on, on this left na navigation. And I'd be able to see a map over here on the right side of where all uh, their locations are. Uh, across the top here, I have those the sites. That's what I'm looking at right now. And so I can see my total power, number of sites, lifetime energy that all my sites have um, you know, produced. And then there's various ways I can search for and filter for sites. I, I assuming this would be for a solar installer that has potentially many hundreds or thousands of sites that they have installed. I can then jump over here to reports and um, then I can generate a report. So it has these five different predefined types of reports. They are uh, pretty simplistic. So uh, daily summary as an example, I can come in here and say, okay, with daily summary, I want to see all my sites and then I can tell it what different data points that I want to see. You know, maybe I don't want to see the city. Maybe I want to see how many alerts there have been, if there's any been, been any outages, for instance. And um, then I can say I want to see a PDF of this and then say generate. It asks me what I want the date to be. In my case, it doesn't really matter too much. So I'll just say generate. That's for yesterday, uh, July 15th. Um, it then generates that report, pops up on my screen. I download it and open that PDF up. And this is what it looks like. In my case, because I only have one site, once again, it's one line item and then it just has all that information across here uh, relating to my site. Um, so uh, these, when you only have one site, it's of a limited usefulness to have this reporting functionality uh, because it's meant to be reporting across aggregate of you know, many different sites. Uh, you can go in here to saved reports and you, and you can save reports that you have uh, predefined the data points that you'd like to see. When you click on it though, it still asks you to define the uh, time frame, and so uh, I wish that it would let you save that time frame into the report uh, settings, but not important. And then you can run that and, and see that report. Um, over here on the support side, it basically just has a link that sends you to the Solar Edge uh, support center where you can get assistance with your site. Um, I, I personally have only used that once when they had one little software bug back in 2018. So in going back over here, uh, I then will click on my site here, and that's where it takes me to the dashboard site that we saw previously with my neighbors where it has uh, the dashboard and the layout icons up here. Uh, all of the reporting information down below is exactly the same, the year-over-year -year comparative analysis, uh, quarter, month, etc. Um, then the, the, the daily graph here or I can change it to week, month, billing cycle, and year. Uh, so not really any difference there, of course. 
Uh, however, as you can see up here, we have now a couple of different uh, icons here, four, four additional icons. So we have charts here. Let's go into that. So with chart, this is kind of cool. You can click on meteorological data and you can say, I want to see temperature, for instance. And then you can go in here and just select your inverter and it has a couple of different data points that you can overlay with that ambient temperature. Uh, and you can also click on the site here and you can have it show you power versus energy or your kilowatt hours. So let's say we, we want to look at the power, for instance. And then you can see the green line is the temperature and the red line is the power production of the uh, solar. So if you look over here, this is 7K, so 7 kilowatts, it actually is getting up to about 7.5 kilowatts uh, at the peak uh, these days. And you can see how the temperature is spiking along with that. Uh, I've noticed with this graph, the temperature is not being taken with very good granularity. It's like a couple of times a day at most. Uh, down here, you can drag this slider and it will show you a larger period of time. And then you can start to see a little bit better uh, correlations of how, like if we go back to here, so this is putting us to, well, that's a little bit too far back, um, about the end of uh, 2019 and so here. So this is the six months or so of the first half of 2020 right here. Um, the temperature is this green line, like I said, and it's trending low, right? Because it's winter time, but it's going upward um, because it's getting warmer in the spring. I honestly don't spend a whole lot of time in these charts. It, it's not uh, terribly uh, a great interface and it uses flash. And so you have to enable flash on this page in order for that to work and, and that won't last forever. So I don't know if they'll upgrade this, but it's not that big a deal. Um, now let's jump over here to reports. Uh, so the, you'll notice that these reports are different than the admin interface. And so these are meant to be showing you reporting relating to this specific site, uh, this you know solar inverter. So as an example, I can come in here to site status and generate this report. And then this is the resulting report and it shows some information and status about your system. And down here it shows if there are any alerts relating to failures on any of your panels or inverters and equipment and the like. Um, so uh, there's a couple of different reports in here that, that may be useful for some people. Uh, alerts here are also reported uh, on this particular page and if there are a lot of alerts you can filter for them go to different pages. I've never had an alert so I don't really ever use this page. Now we'll, let's go into the admin section here. Uh, there's a bunch of different sub pages within the admin section. So first here it says site details and as you can see you can outline uh, various details uh, about your site obviously. Um, this is more of a set it and forget it kind of page. There's not much here to change over time. Uh, you can also upload images of your site here and your installer logo if you had one and then that would show up on the dashboard page for your clients. Uh, site access, um, this allows you to create additional user accounts that people can use to log into this site. Here in the site access section, there's a sub tab for access control. And in here it allows you to enable public access and you can just share this URL to anybody and they can just go look at your uh, power production uh, dashboard without logging in. And then also you have the uh, kiosk uh, functionality. The kiosk uh, is basically a simplified site that looks, this is my kiosk right here, uh, shows power production and then the graph down here uh, rotates periodically between your daily production and your weekly production. Um, and it has a picture of your site right here, of course. And so this enables you to um, basically just have it up on a monitor if you wanted to constantly just see updates, which uh, for a regular home user, I don't see that would ever be useful. Um, and then revenue, this is where you specify uh, what your cost rate uh, of your uh, kilowatt hour would be in your area to give you an idea of uh, what the energy is worth that the solar is producing. So I put here 10.9 cents per kilowatt hour because that's the average for Utah that I have found is the figure I'm going off of there. Um, then we have the logical layout here and this is just showing that there are two strings and that each of those strings have a bunch of uh, panels on them, etc. Um, and then we have the physical layout and this is the most useful page in here in my opinion. I can come down here to edit the published layout and this is where I can uh, dictate what my um, solar panels look like when they're laid out on, on the roof. So um, you can see I have each of the panels outlined across here and then uh, this new section that's over here and the inverter itself. And I can you know, come in here and click on one of these and, and drag and rearrange where it will show up on the page. 
um, based on the layout on the roof. So I've gotten all these outlined. I, I have found with this that it's not terribly precise. As you can see, it has a hard time letting me get them lined up straight. Uh, they're they're kind of wonky, and this is the closest that I could get them to be. So that's that. Um, and then the last thing in here was just this performance section uh, where you specify what your peak kilowatt rate is for your inverter, and then it knows how to run some calculations better. And that's it. Uh, that's everything that is unique to the Solar Edge monitoring portal when you are the admin of the site versus when you are just an end user. I hope this has been helpful for you to see the difference between the administrative interface and the front end dashboard and, and monitoring portal for end users. If you are interested in additional videos like this one relating to solar panels and electric vehicles and technology, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like this video. And with that, I will see you in the next one.